Good morning, guess who is here? <laughs> of course, me, and we have another bow review. Look at this, and can you guess already what it could be? Yes, looks like a Manchu bow. It happened to happen that one of my friends, Dan from the Netherlands, bought a Manchu bow, this one. Then he couldn't use it for certain reasons, and he asked me if I want to have it. And then I said, yes, of course, I buy it and he made me a good price so I bought it because this one a Manchu one I never tested until now and this is yes you guessed right the biocomposite Chinese bow by Grosje uh, getting information was a little tricky because I was looking on Grosje's website for a Manchu bow and I didn't find because he was in the under the Mongolian bows and there it was, the Chinese bow then down there. So I didn't find first information, but then I got it for you. Nice, and it's a 37 pound, I guess. You said so? Yes. Nice, so composite, how we know it, with the sinew plates and with the horn plates, with the wood in the middle. Red accents, they look nice. The seas look nice, nice string bridges. Everything you can expect from a Manjurian Jing design bow, reinforced tips, slight edgy but not too massive, so even here quite thin, so I guess could be a good performer. What do we have? It's the Grosje, it's the Manchu, or he called it Chinese bow, Manchu design, biocomposite, we have a length, so now I found different on Nomad bows I found. It's 61 inches, and on but we go with Grosje's uh, website. It's 58 and a quarter strong. It's 65 and a half unstrung. Has a brace head of seven and a quarter. The other says seven and a half. 37 pounds. You can have this from 30 to 50 pounds. The max draw is 32, so it's a short draw bow, like the Cadi bow short manju. And we don't have an arrow weight recommended. And then the price of this bow is again. The one who sold it to me said he paid 405 euros plus shipping. I found it uh, 385 euros now on the website, so maybe the price changed in the meantime. And I found it even 550 US dollars plus shipping. Looks good. Handle is narrow, a little deep. Doesn't feel that bad. Feels solid. So I might. I might give it away to my patrons because I think they once asked for it in the poll but then it didn't make it. 65 inches knock to knock. Uh, so there are two small leather patches on it. I guess they are custom made. Not sure if they were on it before. But with these leather patches we have an arrow pass width of just 27 millimeters without it would be 25 so but we go with 27 so this bow has not even 500 shots he said looks good yeah let's try it so take your time with your horns in your Look at this. Stringing was easy. Bow is looking good. Sometimes you need to give it a little bit of looking good. Huh? Nice. Manchu with 32 inch draw. So we have seven and you know, wait, we measure it from here most probably. Then it's seven and a half inches, so it's just fine. What we all want to know. Hard to say, 450, maybe? I don't know. Sometimes I nail it and sometimes I'm completely off. Five hundred Sometimes I'm a little off, I said. Bow is straight. Yes. So. Yep, bow is straight, bow is all st stiff, and 
Yeah, Manchu Lake, but it's fine. So, 32 inches. Let's go. <laughs> the draw. <laughs> yeah, it's grocery boats. Nice. So I guess this boat would even do a little more. These arrows are. I don't know. I think 32. Yes, 32 and a quarter. So the shaft is 32. And then you have this little bit of the knock. Look at this. That's so easy peasy. <laughs> it's a mancho, you feel it, but in a good way. We don't know the grain per pound. That's why we start simply with a heavy arrow. This one is 580 grain. It's from Fairborn, Netherland. It's a mancho like arrow. Let's see. No, not 50. So that's nice. Then we have my destroyers, they are 460. Kicks a little like a moncho. Ooh, they feel good. You feel it in your hand, of course, a bit, but that's why you get a moncho. Nice. The draw is nice. Robin Hooding again, huh? <coughs> then I have two left of my Sungurs, they are 420, a bit more lightweight. Ooh. Then you feel it already a bit more in the hand. Mm, yep. And just for the thingy, they are 320. They are even most probably underspined. But it still works. So it's not that you will need to have 15 grain per pound, like with others. You feel it a little more, but it's not that you get some, that it would feel like dry firing. So the bow can handle very low arrow weights. It's only a little uncomfortable than in the hand, so I would go almost probably with 460. That just felt right. You get the grosje bow for the draw experience. This is exceptional. So, 30 meters or 28. Oh, look at this. Even the heavy arrow, 580 grain. They are 460. Oh, a little low. And a little wobbly. Still a little low. Yeah, now you get there. And the uh, Songur is 420 grain. And I think then you reach the minimum grain per pound. They still fly nice, a bit to the right now, they are stiffer. And we shoot one of the lightweight ones. So this bow needs a few, sh I need a few shots with this bow. Ah, these lightweight, yeah, they don't want to shoot, so we don't shoot these lightweight ones anymore. Put the rest up down to 420 grain, works just fine. 28. Let's see, it's such a pretty bow. Looks really good, look at this. Huh? Uh, but what you see, I tell you in a second. 28 is here, 34.7. 30 inches we have. Thirty-seven point five. And a thirty-two. We're crazy, it's not a competition. Uh, 32, wait, this is 30. This is 32. We are at 40.5. And I can tell you already that there is no sticking. Four inches, five pounds, six pounds. Fine. So, 28. Stuff here, huh? 
bit in the way. Yeah, exactly. So, 28. Nothing. The only thing is, there it's not a lot bending, but here is quite a bend. Check it, 13. Doesn't do any problems, but there it's really a little edgy. But this is what you have when the lever comes in here. See, it's 30, it's still nothing. 32. I guess then, where did I put it? There. Not even, look at this. Not there yet. So I would think that this bow would do more. See, there is no stacking. 33 is easy possible. But I read on the website it's 32, so we keep it at 32, right? Because we are good people. Look at this. Nice ears, little squarish, nice reinforced. There with the writing on it. Nice string bridge with this nice half pipe circle here. That, that the string centers automatically. We have this nice whipping as we know it from Grosje bows. The pressed sinew, the processed horn. Whipping, whipping, the handle. I think these leather patches are not, I think Dan made them pretty. And even the shape, of course now for me the brace head could be a little higher, but this bow looks simply really, really good. And the draw, nice. 580 grain, and as we know it's a 40 pound bow now. So now you know what you get. 146, 460 grain, 165, 155 was maybe not completely full draw, 160, yeah. You feel it then a little in the hand already. 420 grain. 168. 163. And just because we can, yeah. Let's shoot them the last time. 320 grain, way too lightweight. And then you feel it, 188. Oh, then it kicks really, 180. So it feels a little like dry firing, 184. So these 320 grain, definitely too lightweight, but the rest works just fine. Interesting is that this bow really performs in this low poundage already very nice, because as we know, Manchu design needs poundage to work. So these heavy ones are nice, 580 grain feels nice, 460, oh, it's still fine, they are only 500 spine I think, it should be fine, ah oh, yeah, look at this, you get the hang of it and this thing is really working, look at this. And it's really, this bow doesn't stick. And I would get some nice manju arrows like these ones from Fairborn Netherlands. They're just nice. They're 33 inches, I think. And look what the bow is doing. I see that. It's 
no problem to draw this ball 33. But it's written 32, so eh, we stick with it. And these destroyers are just destroying. They are so predictable. You exactly see what this bow is doing. Really, really nice. The draw, the shooting, I feel it's not too much of kick, even with 460 grain, not too much of a kick. It's really, that's then 12, not almost 12 grain, just the sweet spot, I guess. So these Sungurs don't fly with it. They fly anywhere, but not, yes, they fly where I want them. This is simply bad shooting. Also, of course, you could ask yourself, because it's not a too long of a bow, could you? Of course you could. This handle is just nice for doing this kind of stuff, so it's no problem. Set <laughs> a shot. Could you? Yeah. Yes, you can. It's fine. Oops, this is the wrong one. So, it's always a little more fiddly this way around. Oh, you know what? Theoretically, it's working. Slavic with this one, just nice. So if you want to, it's nice. So this bow does everything. We have nothing. So it's one, two, three. You almost feel nothing, even if they are string bridges. But you hear it that there's not a lot going on. It's interesting. You feel it a little. But as long as the arrows are 460, so a little more than 10 grain, 12 grain maybe, this bow is just oh, nice. It's an incredible fun shoot. Of course, I hear you already comparison with Kadi bows, Kadi's bows, Mancho, because they both do 32. Oh, the destroyer really destroy everything. It's nice. I would not go more light with than 460 grain for a 40 pounder. Nice. So even if you wanted to Katra, but this bow is not made for Katra torque. Manchu bows, yeah, you know, you don't, you can do it a little, but you have your high wrist grip and then you simply do your Manchu stuff you have to do. And that's all. The Chinese bow or the Manchu bow, Qing Dynasty bow, Bio Composite by Chaba Grosha. A really, really nice bow good looking you know looks really like an historical piece of <laughs> equipment well made yep nice and shoots pretty nice so bow string sleeve usually you get this documentation with shaba but i didn't get it now but maybe because of it's from private i bought the bow so that's why there are four points the handling of this bow was very easy to string, to unstring, so that's only when you unstring it, do it very, very slow, because the, they don't like, they are compressed and they don't like when you snap it open, so unstringing very slow, and then this bow is just... Okay. So, handling of this bow, just fine. Ten. The build, as we know, from Grosje, nothing to complain. Okay. I have to complain that it's already hot. So it's nice. I don't know if these leather patches are uh, standard or if Dan put them on. No idea. They look like an afterthought. Nothing to complain in the build. This bow is just well crafted, as we know the bows from Chaba 10. The basic feel of this bow, this bow doesn't wiggle, even in this direction, stiff. In this direction it's quite stiff so a slight torque or something is surely possible with this bow and you only draw 32 inches so it's i think it's fine with it the handle is good for it the handle feels just nice so you have a nice point back there and then you can wrap your fingers around it may be a little too small for me but you usually do your high wrist grip maybe and then it's fine so 10. The draw experience, this one I would now give 11, but I still give only 10. The draw is exceptionally smooth. This is like, there is nothing to draw. This is 
This ex you really need to experience this with a biocomposite book from Grosje that you know what I mean. This is simply, it's not this springy that you think, okay, you, you load a spring, you simply, you throw it back like this, nothing, and then kick zero. So it's ten. And the shooting experience, after a few shots with the right arrows, this thing is a precision machine. Just nice. The, of course, you don't shoot. You don't shoot 320 grain with it, so you should go. It's a manchable with, I would say, 12 grain per pound. From 10 upwards, better 12, and then you're good to go. So you don't need 15 grain like others. With 12 grain, this bow just performs nicely. You have a little mancho kick, but nothing which would really kick. So you feel it, it's solid. And then afterwards, there's nothing going on in your hand or something. So it's like, it's a, such a pleasure to shoot. So that's why shooting experience 10 gives you 54 because of the packaging. But as I said, usually there is this documentation in it and it would be now 56 points. But what can I do? So price wise now I saw it from 385 to 405. So let's say 400 euros plus shipping for a biocomposite bow with this smooth draw, with this performance and with this speed. And then you see that the Manchurian design usually, they say from 80 pounds upwards, you feel it, you see it. On the other side, the sears are not so long and too aggressive in the angle. So it's, it's a bit more gentle, a bit more smooth, everything. So that's why this bow just works fine, even in 40 pounds. That's why I would give it price-wise a five just fine. I mean, 400 euros for this bow is it's a bargain. It's nothing. I really like this bow. So thank you very much, Dan, for reaching out to me because he realized that I never shot this bow and he wanted to get rid of it and hey, ship it to me. <laughs> nice, see? And with these string bridges, the string always ends up roughly in the middle again. Just a beautiful piece of art. And the draw is simply <laughs> nice. So, thank you, Dan, for reaching out to me. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, thank you, Shaba, for building these amazing bows. They are really, really nice. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you in the next one.